السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين Welcome everybody from around the world I am Bilal Abdul Kareem and this is the Bilal Abdul Kareem Show Guys, we're really happy to have you here today because we're going to be doing something a little bit different here today um, Today um, is going to be more of a I guess we're going to say a, a bit of a motivational uh, thing today um, and less so just the news. Now, we're going to talk about what brought this uh, one episode change on um, because we will be next uh, week returning to our normal uh, format, inshallah ta'ala. But um, uh, first of all, what brought on these different feelings that I have going on here today that we're going to talk about? Well, a couple of days ago, as a lot of you, or probably most of you don't know, that the United Nations came out with a report. And it basically, it was a fact-finding uh, mission. And it basically said that the Myanmar military has committed what amounts to war crimes and crimes against humanity. Hooray! <laughs> they said what we already knew. And it says in the report, there is sufficient information to warrant the investigation and prosecution of senior officials in the Tetmadel. Uh, uh, Tetmadel Tet means a military a chain of command so that a competent court can determine their liability for genocide. <laughs> now that's interesting right there when the United Nations is pointing the genocidal finger at uh, somebody and they pointed it at the government of Myanmar. And it went on to state the gross human rights violations and abuses committed by in Kashin, Rakhine, and Shan states are shocking for their horrifying nature and ubiquity. Many of these violations undoubtedly amount to the gravest crimes under international law. Mm. All right. So you got that, right? Now, when I, when I saw this, some people were thinking that there were going to be some change in the international community. There's going to be an international outcry. Now it's not just a black guy um, you, you know, uh, in Syria talking about genocide. It's other people talking about it. Yeah, there's going to be some changes. That's what some people said. Mm, 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 mm. Didn't translate like that. Actually, the United Nations report kind of came. There were a few yawns, and it went. You had your normal articles in The Guardian, uh, New York Times, and stuff like that and everything, but eh, it didn't really amount to much. Uh, porn stars getting paid off and things of this nature all count for a lot more these days, uh, I guess we should say in a press atmosphere, than things of this nature to some Rohing, 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 what? How do you pronounce that name again? You see? So the Rohingya don't really amount to much when it comes to worldwide international attention. And then I started to think, and I said, hey, man, you know, Bilal, you get up here every week and you talk about what's happening in Syria and you talk about what's happening in Afghanistan and talk about what's happening in a lot of different places. And not a lot changes from week to week. And I believe that what we're doing is a good thing and it's the right thing and we're going to get back to that thing. But at the same time, I, there need to be some changes out there. And therefore, I just put together uh, three steps to being a new you. Now, are there more than three steps? Yeah, there could be 30. But I wanted to do something that was succinct, something that we could put together into one big ball so that uh, it was practical stuff that people could look at and then if they wanted to look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? Things are going south around the world in general. And that means that there need to be some good people that are not only good inside, but those people who are good outside and who do the right things. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says throughout the Quran, الَّذِينَ amenu, Those people who believe, and that's inside. وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَةً and to do righteous good deeds. So we need some people out there that look and see that stuff is going in the wrong direction and they actually do something. So 
I've got three steps to being a new you. If there's anybody out there interested in being a new you or an improved you, because like, for example, if you're black, you're not going to be white. That's not what I meant. Or if you're Chinese, you're not going to be Indian. So if you thought that that was what this was about, okay, you need to like go to another website. All right. All right, so we're going to get started. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Now, Allah says that he didn't create man, uh, the, jinn, the jinn or mankind for any reason except to worship him. Now, look, that's where the good stuff lies. Because it's not fun going against the powers that be. It's not fun to uh, be in, like, Egypt or to be in Saudi Arabia and have to stand up and say to Muhammad bin Salman, you're a no good bum and so is your father. Okay, that's not easy to do. And you probably want to say something a little more constructive than that. But the point of the matter is, is that Allah didn't create anybody, didn't create the jinn of mankind for any reason except to worship him alone. Okay, but wait a minute. They say, wait a minute, Bilal, what's the connection? And then it says after that in another place, it says, And it says, And whoever is removed away from the fire and admitted to paradise, for whoever is admitted to paradise, for men nari wa jannah, He indeed is successful. Now, that means if you do righteous good deeds, you'll be removed from the fire. And if you do that, what's the fear for Mohammed bin Salman, Sisi, Donald Trump? When you understand the way that this world works, it creates an atmosphere of less fear. We need to stop as Muslims. We have a culture of giving aid, and that's a good thing. Giving aid is good. But we don't have a culture of doing the things that are necessary so that we don't have to give aid. For example, when we see that things are going in an opposite direction, we generally don't, too many of us, I guess we'll say, don't stand up. And therefore, we just sit and we watch things go by day after day, just like we're watching traffic. And therefore, that's when a real crisis erupts because those people who are doing evil feeling that they can operate, operate with impunity. They can just do their thing. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Who's going to say anything? Nobody's been saying anything up until now. Go ahead and kill those people off. And that's exactly what happens. But then the Muslims will come running and then they'll say, wait a minute, I got some money for burial. And the other one will say, I've got some money for bandages. And the other one will say, I've got some money for plastic limbs and things of this nature. Yeah, that's a good thing, but that's not exactly what we are after. Now, Allah says in Surah Tunah, he says, whoever works righteousness, whether male or female, while he or she, got to get that in there, is a true believer, verily to him we will give a good life and we, and we shall pay them certainly a reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do. Now, look at this. He says that will give you a good life. That's what everybody's after. Everybody is after happiness. If you want it, you got to do the right things. If you want that, then you're going to have to start to stand up to uh, these powers that be. It might be Ch Theresa May. It might be Bashar al-Assad. It might be other than that. But if you want a new you, and you sit back, and you watch these atrocities happen, and you don't act, then you're the old you, and you're not changing anything. So what we now have to start saying to ourselves before we go to bed tonight, we're gonna have to sit back and say, okay, what am I gonna do different tomorrow that I didn't do today? And you need to come up with an answer before you put your head down on that pillow. Come up with something. What is gonna be different tomorrow than what you do today? So the first thing is, is that you have to believe in Allah and believe that you're supposed to be doing right, righteous good deeds. Not just thinking about it, not just, you, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna work on, to, I'm gonna go to the gym, and then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna head out somewhere and I'm gonna go and, and, and kick some oppressor's butt or something like that. Yeah, that sounds nice, but there's never a perfect time except right now to do the right thing. 
Sometimes perfect time is never going to come. But that doesn't mean that you can't work. You can't operate. You can't try to make some changes. That's what we have to hear today. Everybody got that part? Okay, so the first thing is, is that you have to believe in Allah and believe that the way for you to be happy is to make those changes. All right, that's the first thing. Second thing, we got to work hard. Listen, brothers and sisters, people around the world, people who want to do good. If we don't work, nothing's going to change. Now, I remember I heard a story about Muhammad Ali, and it really was, uh, it really meant a lot to me. They said, uh, they asked Muhammad Ali, and that fly that's here every week is back again. Okay, there he is. Um, they asked him a question. They said, look, Muhammad Ali, how many crunches do you do? You know, stomach crunches. He said, I don't know. They said, what are you talking about you don't know? And he said, well, I don't start counting until I get tired. Now, what about that? How's that for commitment? He didn't start counting until he got tired. And everybody knows that he's a three, that he was a three-time, a lawyer, a uh, three-time world uh, uh, heavyweight champion, uh, which is not easy to do, folks, because you have to be great over a long period of time. And that's what he was in that ring. He was. And he had a work ethic. Us, we don't really have a work ethic. We do some stuff if it becomes easy. But what you need to do is establish a few things. First, in the morning, when you get up, have yourself some type of regimen in terms of what you do. If you want to change your life, and you first have to, you got to think about what direction you want to go in. And I don't care where you are today. You could be homeless and just get a few megabytes to listen to this broadcast. And then you would say, hey, I want to change my life. Fine. It doesn't make a difference if you say, you know what? I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or this or that. Or I want to go and help the Muslims in such and such country. And I, all you've got to do is just take the steps. That's all you've got to do. Start to take the steps to go in that particular direction, one step at a time. How do you want to help the Muslims? What can you do? Okay, well, I'd like to, um, uh, uh, um, you know, I'm an engineer, so I would like to go out there. But you know what? I don't speak the language. I don't know if I can do anything out there. Nobody's going to listen to me. Okay, fine. Why don't you? Get yourself some type of book or online thing, and you say, after I pray Fajr in the morning, and so Fajr is maybe, what, 5 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, depending on where you're at, and then you say, I'm going to work on my Arabic for one hour in the morning because I know in six months' time or three months' time, I want to be in Syria or I want to be in uh, 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 Afghanistan or I want to be in Palestine or I want to be or whatever the case is. We've got to actually do things. Why? Because nobody's going to do it for you. Look at these Rohingya. Is it a secret what's been going on? Not a secret for anybody. It's been going on for, for more than a year. That's when they started the mass exodus. But it was going on long before that. Even when Obama was cozying up to these generals in Myanmar, did he not know? Of course he knows. He knew what was going on at the time. So the point of the matter is, is that particularly as Muslims, no one's coming to save you. And th I'm doing this broadcast right now on the eve of what might be the Syrian Arab army, the Russian military, the Iranians, and their uh, uh, assault on the rebels' final stronghold, which is in Idlib, which is exactly where I'm sitting right now. Um, it is looking more and more likely that that might actually take place. So what's the connection to it? The connection to it is just like the people here, just like the Rohingya, just like the Afghans, just like the people in so many different places, like the people in Gaza, the people in Palestine. Nobody's coming to save you. Everybody has to realize that, alhamdulillah, I think that from the places that I went this past week where we went and we talked to some people and we saw some things, that it seems very clear to me that the rebel fighters here in northern Syria realize there's no cavalry coming over the hill. And they've been working hard to make preparations, serious preparations, preparations I never saw before. And hopefully, uh, uh, you know, Bashar al-Assad and his crew haven't seen it either because they're the only thing that's standing in between them and a couple of million civilians which have been pushed out of other places around the country. So the point of the matter here is, is this. Nobody is coming to save you. 
you have to realize that. Because Allah speaks in the Quran, He says, Alladina Aminu. Again, here it is again. Who believe, Wa'amidu Saliha, and they do righteous good deeds. You have to work and you have to work hard. Don't talk about, well, you know what, I got this job and, you know, and the dog and, you know, the cat sometimes doesn't use the cat litter and therefore I can't, I, I just don't have any time. Okay, well, fine. But then you realize you don't have anything to complain about because you're not looking to change your life. You're not looking for that. You're looking to keep things exactly the way that they are. And you're hoping that somehow, someday, some way, magically, mystically, or majestically, things are going to change all by themselves. Not going to happen like that. That's step number two, that you got to work hard, getting up every day, having a real goal and going after it. Final thing, do the right thing. Now, going back some years ago, there was a movie that was by Spike Lee, and it said, and it was Do the Right Thing. I remember I saw that movie. Uh, actually, I worked on that movie. But the point of the matter is, is that it's very easy to watch while other people do the right thing, and you don't participate in it. Sometimes what we do is we'll actually see other people doing what you know to be the right thing. But you kind of sit back and then say, well, let's see how far he gets. Because if he gets smacked down or he gets locked up or he gets popped upside the head with a rock, I don't think I'm going to join him. I think I'm going to let him do that. That's what we do so often. Once again, go back to step two. Nobody's going to do it for you. Hard work. So the point here is that you have to do the right thing. Now, doing the right thing is not always easy. Actually, it's quite the contrary. It's usually hard. But if you want to change your life, you want to do something different, you want to actually make a difference in this ummah so that we could stop constantly talking about massacres in this country, massacres in that country, Muslims living under uh, oppressive, tyrannical rulers wearing the clothing of Islam, but in actuality, they're acting just like the worst of people oppressing the, uh, oppressing the uh, defenseless Muslims. So the question has to go out for you. Are you prepared to do the right thing? Now, the right thing might be uh, it could be a lot of things, but everybody's going to have to get involved. We have to stop sitting back, um, waiting for something to happen. Uh, uh, maybe the U.N. is coming. Maybe Turkey's coming or maybe the U.S. will, 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 will change the, their tune or something like that or whatever. I heard somebody say just this morning that if the Syrians want to get saved, the, uh, uh, it would have to be something drastic like the U.S. would have to uh, all of a sudden make a no-fly zone. <laughs> what are you guys kidding me? Is that a joke? The United, Donald Trump doesn't care if these people all burn. The United States government didn't even declare what's happening in Myanmar as a genocide, even after the United Nations report. Why? Because there are certain guidelines and protocols that are going to kick in that he may not want to deal with. So therefore, they'll just, they, they, they said this week that we are studying the report which means that they can take it, put their cereal bowl or coffee cup on top of it, and therefore they don't stain their, their, their tables. And that's pretty much what it's worth to some of them. So to end this thing, guys, if you want to change your life, if you want to do something different, let's stop constantly talking about the things that we can change, okay? I mean, at the end of the day, we're not helpless. We are not a helpless people, you know? Like, some turtle or something that just ends up on his back on his shell and, you know, he just can't even turn himself over. We're not like that. There are a lot of things that are at our disposal. Everybody has something at their disposal. And if you don't use it, then you don't have a right to complain. And then don't feel surprised if sometime some oppression might reach you. And you may not have anybody to call upon. I am Bilal Abdul Kareem. This has been the Bilal Abdul Kareem Show. Jazakumullahu khaira. And uh, I guess we'll bring our normal format back next week, inshallah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.